Uh, my name is Ineida Peric, and I'm a hematologist and bone marrow transplant physician uh, from Zagreb, Croatia, and the chair of the Transplant Complications Working Party of the EBMT. And today I will give you an overview of the most promising agents in steroid refractory chronic GVHD setting. Uh, we know that steroid uh, refractory chronic GVHD is a highly unmet need uh, in the transplant field due to the fact uh, that uh, at least half of uh, patients with chronic GVHD will be refractory to first-line uh, treatment and become steroid refractory, and also due to the fact that for decades we did not have an approved uh, agent in this uh, setting. Um, thanks to a very important initiative, so the GVHD uh, NIH Consensus Conference, uh, we managed to standardize the field, uh, to standardize uh, diagnostic and response uh, criteria, which actually paved the way uh, for clinical uh, trials in this setting and led to the approval of the first uh, agent in steroid refractory chronic GVHD in 2017. And we know that that was ibrutinib, which uh, actually was evaluated in a phase 1b2 study, uh, where it uh, showed response in over 60% of patients and was approved. Uh, however, it did not really enter clinical practice as we thought it would because uh, many of patients discontinue treatment due to diverse events. However, 2021 was a revolution in uh, steroid refractory chronic GVHD because this year we got two new agents uh, approved um, in this setting. And um, so from this year, we have three instead of one and the new agents approved uh, here are belomucidil and broxolitinib, so both oral agents. Um, belomucidil was approved in July and broxolitinib just recently, a week ago. Uh, belomucidil uh, is actually a ROC2 uh, inhibitor, so an agent that works by downregulating STAT3 pathway and decreasing uh, TH17 uh, population and upregulates STAT5, so it increases Treg and also is uh, active in many fibrotic pathways. And this drug was first evaluated in a dose finding study where it showed responses in over 60% of patients and was then further evaluated uh, in a phase two uh, study, which led to its approval in over 130 patients, uh, divided into two groups with two doses, uh, 200 milligrams once uh, or twice uh, daily. And this study showed impressive responses. Uh, both groups had overall response uh, in around 75%. Uh, and the median time to response was only uh, five uh, weeks. This response was also sustained. Median duration of treatment was around 10 months. And uh, at 12 months, 59% uh, uh, of uh, patients had a sustained response. Uh, our uh, important uh, outcomes of failure-free survival at six months was 75%. Uh, and also two, two thirds of these patients were uh, able to decrease the use of steroids. Uh, also very important, belomucidil was safe. Uh, only 12% uh, of patients had to discontinue treatment to, due to the adverse uh, events. And also uh, belomucidil was evaluated in patients who received two to five lines of previous therapy. And uh, also in patients who previously received ibrutinib and ruxolitinib, so one third uh, in each uh, group, uh, and the responses were still very impressive uh, in these groups uh, too. The other agent approved, so ruxolitinib, which we know was previously approved in steroid refractory acute GVHD, was approved based on a phase three study. REACH-3 study, so in comparison to uh, best available therapy in the dose two times uh, 10 milligrams per day, uh, where at six months, it showed an overall response of 49% in comparison to 25% uh, in the best available therapy arm. So a pretty uh, impressive uh, difference. 
Um, and uh, here also the response uh, was sustained. Median duration was uh, also uh, around uh, 10 months. At the 12 months, uh, response was sustained in 69% uh, of the patients. Um, also importantly, safety, safety profile was very satisfactory. 16% of patients had to stop the treatment due to adverse uh, events, but the infection rate was not higher as compared to the best available therapy around 20% uh, in both uh, arms. So this really brings um, uh, news uh, in the field uh, and the field uh, of steroid refractory chronic GVHD is now blooming. However, um, although responses for both drugs are seen across all organs, most um, uh, responses are not complete remission. So uh, of course, what we need in the future is to find adequate combination treatment in order to uh, improve the rate of complete remissions as well. But also what is very interesting is of course, moving these agents uh, to the first line therapy in order to avoid uh, getting steroid refractory chronic GVHD in general, but also in order to try the steroid free approach as well, which is of course our uh, ultimate uh, goal, knowing the toxicity prof profile of steroids and that uh, infections are the most important cause uh, of death in our chronic GVHD patients.